I'm not a very good flyer. So, my plan to get back to England was to do a small part of it on a ship. This led to a conversation where somebody explained to me that sometimes people go missing on cruise ships with little to no explanation. And if there is an explanation, the details tend to be wrapped in mystery. And after digging a little deeper, I found what this person told me was sadly true. In fact, it's believed that around 200 people have gone missing on cruise ships since the year 2000. Before we start, I just want to say a big thank you to Wicked Clothes for sponsoring another video. A lot of true crime and horror channels get demonetized, so these sponsors are vital if you enjoy this kind of content. And if you haven't heard of them, Wicked Clothes are a company who specialize in creepy and funny clothing, and they honestly make some of the best designs I've seen, and I'm sure you'll agree too. The first one I'll show you are these Mothman t-shirts and sweatshirts. I'm a big fan of these ones. And the serial killer documentary and chill is quite possibly one of my favourite sweatshirt designs of all time. So definitely check out that one because that one's so cool. And this week they have also dropped a new pin collection, which I'm sure most of you will probably like. And they feature three of my favourite designs which are Be Nice to Dogs, Serial Killer Documentaries and Chill, and The Mothman. So what I'll do, I'll put a link to the website in the description and in the comments too. And if you click that link, you get an automatic 10% off at the checkout. Or you can use Disturbant in the coupon section too. So please guys, check them out because they help the channel so much. And if you do decide to buy something, it helps me out and you also get some cool stuff too, so everyone's a winner. And now, on to the video. On the 29th of February 2012, a woman named Fariba Amani was enjoying a Bahamas celebration cruise with her boyfriend of 8 months. He was a 46 year old man named Ramiz Golshani. Ramiz was making his way to the casino by himself at around 1am that night. Just before heading there by himself, he was with Fariba in the gift shop. After a couple of hours at the casino, he went back to the cabin to get some sleep. But when he got there, he noticed that Fariba wasn't in bed. Not thinking too much of it, he went to sleep and woke up the following morning at 7am and the ship had docked at the port of Palm Beach. Ramiz began to get worried and searched for Fariba, but unfortunately, he couldn't find her anywhere. He then got hold of the staff on board and explained the situation. The staff began to search for her too, but she was nowhere to be seen. In fact, Nobody has seen or heard from Fariba to this day, and her disappearance remains a complete mystery. Now, I thought this was somewhat of a rare occurrence, but as I said, there are a few people who have gone missing on cruise ships. I'll return to Fariba's story shortly, but first, I'll just briefly tell you about some other cases where people have gone missing on these cruise liners. One of the most famous cases of a person going missing on a cruise ship is Amy Lynn Bradley. I know a lot of my viewers watch Mike from that chapter, so you have probably seen this before on his channel. But if not, I'll just delve into it quickly. Amy Lynn Bradley was on a week-long cruise with her brother and her parents. On the morning of March 24th, 1988, Amy had been drinking with the ship's band who were called Blue Orchid till around 1am. At around 5.30am, her father saw her sleeping on their balcony. Then at around 6am, he went to go and check on her to make sure she was okay, only to discover that she had gone. He quickly became concerned, as Amy was the type of person to always tell them where she was going. So, he contacted the crew staff to inform them that he couldn't locate his stepdaughter. Amy's brother said that he saw her after 6am, and she had told him that she was leaving the ship to get some cigarettes. But... She never returned. Searches were conducted on the ship and at sea. The Netherlands Coast Guard searched for Amy for five days, along with the assistance from a Caribbean cruise liner. But by the 29th of March, the search had ended. Amy's family flew back to Curaçao to search for their daughter, but sadly, they were unsuccessful. There have been several alleged sightings of Amy in the 23 years that she has disappeared. In 1999, an active duty Navy sailor claimed to have had an interaction with a woman who said she was Amy, and she begged him for help. The sailor told her where his ship was docked, but 
he never reported the incident out of fear of repercussion from being in a brothel. By the time that anybody was able to check on the allegations he had made, the brothel had burned to the ground. And in 2005, a witness was in a department store when a woman entered the bathroom with three men. These three men started to threaten her about some kind of deal she refused to accept. The witness then approached the crying woman and asked her what her name was. And this woman replied that her name was Amy and that she was from Virginia. The three men then entered the bathroom again and took her away. And the woman managed to create a composite sketch for the police. And the composite sketch bears a striking resemblance to her. Amy's parents even received an anonymous mysterious photograph of a woman via email. And the woman in the photograph bared a striking resemblance to Amy. And she appeared to be dressed in extremely revealing clothing. This has led many people including investigators to believe that Amy was captured and sold into sexual slavery. Amy was also a trained lifeguard and investigators said there was no evidence that she had fallen overboard. Amy was only 23 years old when she vanished and at the time of writing she has been missing for 23 years. And then we have the strange case of George Smith and I found this one extremely chilling. He was on a two week Mediterranean honeymoon cruise with his wife Jennifer on the 5th of July 2005. The couple had enjoyed a meal together before they started drinking to celebrate and they both got extremely intoxicated. The couple were incredibly social people and they made some friends pretty quickly and the friends that they made claimed that they saw Jennifer getting a little too close to an employee at the casino. At some point, Jennifer and George got into a heated exchange and Jennifer kicked George in the genitals and then walked away. And these witnesses said that this employee followed Jennifer. George carried on drinking and got so drunk that he could barely even walk. So a couple of his new friends helped him back to his room. But Jennifer wasn't there. At some point, George decided to search the ship for Jennifer but when he couldn't find her, he gave up and just went back to the room. And just after he arrived back at the room, he invited three of his new friends back for a drinking game. His neighbour called to report the group making loud noises. And then he heard the group arguing. And then after some time, the neighbour said he heard a voice ushering people out of the room. He then peeked through the eye hole and saw three people leave. And only a few seconds later, the neighbour heard a disturbingly loud thud from George's room. He said it sounded like somebody had fallen on the balcony, but not off the balcony. At around 5am, Jennifer was found by hotel staff who discovered her passed out and asleep in one of the hallways. She returned to the room to discover that her husband wasn't there. She wasn't too concerned as she just thought that George might be sleeping in a different room which was something he had done earlier in the trip. So Jennifer just went for her massage appointment but halfway through there was an announcement on the tannoy after a passenger found blood on a lifeboat canopy that was directly below George's room. They quickly realised that George could have gone overboard. The mysterious bloodstain found outside George's room on the canopy was believed to be a print of his body. Jennifer claimed that she didn't remember too much from that night. But instead of staying back and looking for her husband, Jennifer flew back to America the next day. And what is rather strange about this case is that there was some video footage found on a camera belonging to the group that were in George's room on the night when the neighbour heard them arguing. And the footage shows the men joking about George's death and then one of them stands up and holds up a gang sign and says, told you I was gangster. And this was just after the discussion about George's death and apparently it seemed like he was bragging about having done something to George. All of those men deny knowing anything about what happened to George that night and none of them have been charged. Jennifer received a $1.1 million settlement in 2007 from the Royal Caribbean Cruises 
and she is now estranged from her ex-husband's family, as they believe that she knows more about their son's death than what she told the authorities. The FBI dropped the criminal investigation to the potential murder of George in 2015. George was just 26 years old. No one has ever been charged with George's death and his body has never been recovered. So what could have happened to Fariba, the woman who I mentioned in the beginning of the video? Well, just before the cruise, Fariba told her sister that her relationship was getting a little rocky and she had gotten in contact with a private investigator as she started to suspect that Ramiz might be having an affair. She told her sister before heading off on the cruise that this was a last attempt to rekindle their romance. After she went missing, the private investigator spoke to the police and told them that Fariba said that Ramiz was a control freak and demanded that she tell him her whereabouts at all times. Before she left for the cruise, she told her family that she never went through with hiring the private investigator after she spoke to him, and this was because she worried how Ramiz would react if he ever found out. After she vanished, Ramiz made no attempt to contact Fariba's family. At this present moment in time, Ramiz is not a suspect in the disappearance of Fariba, and he is adamant that he had no involvement in her disappearance whatsoever and stated that he would never harm her. He told the press, I am missing a loved one. Both families love her. We want her safe back home right now. Some people believe that a crew member could have killed her and thrown her body overboard after a sexual attack, and some people believe that she got drunk and simply fell overboard. And then some people believe that it could have been a deliberate suicide attempt. No surveillance footage of Fariba from that night has ever been released to the public. Now these are just three cases, but there are so many more that I might touch upon in future videos. So, what really could be happening here? Well I think it's a mixture of a few different things. I think there could be gangs who operate on cruise ships and capture people and sell them into sexual slavery, knowing full well that their disappearance could be disregarded as a drunken accident and that they could have just gone overboard. And after seeing the case of Amy Lynn Bradley, this could be a real possibility for some of the cases at least. But it's also common for passengers to overindulge on cruises and many people get blind drunk. It happens all too often. I can imagine that a lot of people go to the side of the ship to be sick and accidentally fall in. But even if this is the case, that's just as terrifying. Imagine going overboard in the dead of night, all alone floating in a vast ocean, unable to see anything because of the darkness, with no idea what is below you. All you can do is watch as the cruise ship disappears into the distance, knowing full well you have no chance of rescue. All you can do is wait for your inevitable death to come.